So in this part, I'm going to show you how you can migrate categories to Shopify by using Shopify Admin REST API. Uh, basically, this is the second part of Shopify API series. In previous part, I just showed you how to install development store and um, set up API key credentials, password by, uh, by creating private app and all this stuff. I will share the link in the description of this video in case you want to uh, check it out. And in this part, so after this series, we will go through the entities such as categories, products, orders, customers, and try to migrate them to Shopify by using the API. Uh, those series, those episodes, is going to be very useful for um, who wants to get familiar with Shopify, actually the e-commerce platforms. And I hope that that's going to be useful for you. So let's not waste time and start creating the client. All right, so we are starting by creating the, the structure of the project, actually, how it's going to be. First, let's create a new empty directory named client. We're going to create init.py to make it Python package. And then we are going to need data. Basically, under this directory, we're going to hold data classes that will uh, that will represent like data storage. Uh, it's, it's going to be used to store our data. I already uh, explained what is data classes and how we can use it in such cases in previous video. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be very helpful to catch what's going on in here. Okay. Then we're going to create new actually new folder again utils. And in utils we are going to hold the constant helper functions, uh, this kind of files which are not directly used in the main main algorithm or let's say um, main structure of program, but those are going to be very helpful and in real world applications uh, we are holding this kind of stuff in utils on the utils directory which makes the project more more clean and more maintainable then let's add a new file category.py uh, actually we can create this on on let's say shopify but it's not important actually let's not make it complicated just creating uh, the entity names as a Python files will be enough, I think. Like category by product py and so on. Alright, so let's continue by creating a new file inside client directory. We're going to name it Shopify client.py. Oops, client.py. Basically, we're going to create a new class here, uh, which will hold uh, the functions, the precise functions that those are going to interact with Shopify to send requests, receive response and do stuff with it such as uh, i don't know in, in this case we just need one function the api request but assuming that we have the other entities in the future we can apply some additional functionalities here so it's good practice to make it as a class um so let's start by importing first let's import json so the reason we are, we are importing json here is since we are going to create our data in dictionary python dictionary and it's not acceptable by Shopify, so it must be a JSON, right? And so at this certain point, we can use JSON library to make it uh, as a JSON object. So it's going to dump the data, which will uh, which will be acceptable by Shopify. And then let's create our class, class Shopify client. I'm really sorry for um, typing because my microphone cable is in front of my keyboard, which basically it's kind. Of, I'm kind of struggling to push the buttons. Okay, we don't need that one here. Shopify client. We are not going to inherit from any class. So then let's create def init. We have to set some initial attributes for this class. That's going to be first argument itself. Then we will need API password to interact with Shopify API. In the previous video, I showed you how. If you don't watch it, please go and uh, check it out. Let's use typing here, actually. It's going to be string. The API password is going to be string. Then we need shop URL, which is also going to be string. And then endpoint, finally. The endpoints can be different for entities such as categories is different, product is different naturally. And so that's it. Now let's assign this attribute, assign these values. So self API password is going to API password. 
going to copy paste this really quick. Then what we have here, we have shop URL. Shop URL and the endpoint, oops, endpoint. And finally, uh, so that's okay. And finally, we need headers. We're going to define it in init function headers. And for initial value, and the initial value of headers is going to be accept application JSON, as I said before, application JSON and content type. Content type is going to be again application JSON. Why I'm not copy pasting it? Waste of time. That's it. Now let's add a new function which basically allow us to interact with Shopify API, send requests and receive response. Actually, not receive response. Just send requests for uh, for this part for this episode. API request solve. And let's update our headers. If you didn't watch the first part, please go and watch it because we are going to use some uh, reference from previous from previous episode, which I don't want to explain it here. Uh, that's going to be some kind of waste of time. Or let's say I'm replicating the same things again and again. So we are going to use our header Shopify X Shopify Access Token, which allows us to uh, to authenticate our uh, requests, authorize and authenticate our requests and the value is going to be API password that we created in our uh, private app in Shopify. So after that let's um, let's define context. Inside context we need method which method we are going to use and uh, we can pull it from the quarks quarks get method. Did we define quirks? No, okay, let's do it. Let's say, oops, quarks and quarks. Okay, method. Next, we are going to need URL. <clears throat> the URL is going to be concatenation of shop URL and endpoint. So let's assume that the endpoint is something slash admin API collections.json. And this is relative uh, relative path. The endpoint is going to be relative path, but we need to concatenate these two strings together. So um, self shop URL. Let's use or strip. Uh, oops, URL. Or strip. In in case we forgot to remove the uh, the latest slash from the URL, just in case. I don't know. <laughs> And self dot endpoint because some because you know it can happen when you are using it in real world applications if user forgot to add uh, forgot to remove the final slash from this uh, from the URL it's going to be end up with error because there will be two slashes you know the endpoint itself is relative path there will be double slashes so that's why it's good case always to validate your data uh, validate your uh, how to say attributes validate your values URL timeout. Final is at timeout. Let's wait for 60 second maximum. And headers. We have to parse headers as well. That's the main point. Sefta headers. Okay, so let's say we we are oops, what's happening? Let's say we have post request. We want to send post request. Um, then we have to pass data as well inside context. Uh, for now, it's only able to send get get request or delete request without any data. So let's add check uh, if statement here to check if the method if method is post. Then simply insert um, add new key value pairs inside our context method data. The key is going to be data and the value we're going to pull data inside from the Fox. Let's use get as well. Get, oops, get data. That's it. Uh, final return. Requests. Uh, do we import here? Yeah, import requests. JSON. 
Um, so we need to use requests here. Requests dot request and unpack the context JSON. So that's it. I hope you uh, you understand what what's going on here. It's just basic Python stuff I just showed you. But there are some clean code best uh, clean code practices here. That's why we created utils. We can create a new file named constants constants.py and then we can uh, we can define these strings, these constants inside our uh, constants file and then import here use by this way. That's going to be make the project more clean and maintainable. Well let's just copy paste this header name constants we're going to import enum actually from from enum import enum and class um, sh let's say Shopify defaults Shopify defaults it's going to be enum and Shopify um, Shopify API version first we need API version because as you uh, as you saw in the previous video there are multiple versions here and we're going to use the latest which is to, uh, 2021 and then 10 I think the latest was uh, was like that then Shopify Shopify API header let's paste the value oops so I swing that's it Shopify default so the API version is default um, this is the header is default as well that's why I think the naming conventions is fitting with these values um, then let's add the request types class okay there are two gaps. okay class request types this time it's going to be enum as well. So get, get, and then post. Going to be post. Oops. And delete. It's going to be delete. Okay. So what else we need here? We need add uh, the endpoints, the constant to hold endpoints. Let's add those as well. Shopify store admin enum. First, in this episode, we said we are going to migrate collections, so let's add collect collection endpoint. The collection endpoint is going to be admin API to uh, 2021 10, then custom collections.json. Uh, so actually I didn't show you where I got it from so basically as I said in few past months I did a lot of Shopify migrations that's why I learned it by heart but let me show you real quick where I get it from Shopify API collections collection custom collections yeah that's it we're going to use okay the endpoint for post is like that and get okay so it's same as we used here right yeah it's same the final check okay it's same great custom collections.json so that's going to be our constants for now let's navigate to Shopify client so um, we're going to import the from utils constant import um, request types and Shopify defaults so so for Shopify client we just need these uh, just two of them request types and Shopify defaults let's now replace them with proper values Shopify defaults Shopify header and value like that and then what we got here yeah the request type Request types, post, value, like that. So anything else we can replace it 
with constants, nothing here, I guess, nothing. So that's it for now. So our client is ready to interact with our development store. So now it's time to add data.